If AI could save Bethany's life, it might save yours. This talk tells the true story of a medical emergency and how ChatGPT saw it coming. Three weeks ago, I woke up from a nap on a lazy Sunday afternoon and found some red spots all over my legs. My husband was in the other room with our daughter and I decided to use ChatGPT to ask about the spots and some digestive issues. And I was really surprised when it told me this. You need to go to the ER urgent care immediately. When you arrive, tell them you have severely low platelets and woke up to new bruising, red spots, and you need immediate evaluation for possible bleeding risk. Holy shit. Now, it wasn't just the severe language that got me, it was the emojis. I'm not a doctor, but ChatGPT was clearly trying to get my attention. So I called my husband in from the other room and I'm like, Jason, I think I have to go. And I did what any rational New Yorker would do. I got in a taxi and I went to the ER. What ensued was a harrowing three-day experience that got increasingly scary, and I had ChatGPT with me the entire time. Now, this wasn't just some one-off request to ChatGPT. In the end, it took me 77 prompts from being in the hospital, understanding what was happening, and ultimately saving my life. And since it saved my life, I thought it'd be helpful for me to share how I did that. The four stages that I went through were initially self-triaging my own diagnosis, moving into expanding the context and decision making, having communication in the hospital, and distilling and synthesizing it. Now, this initial triage wasn't that easy. I started a company recently, I've been under a lot of stress, and my diet hasn't exactly been that great. I went to the doctor earlier in the week because I was having weird digestive issues, and he's like, I've seen this mode before, it's stress-induced IBS, don't worry about it. But on Sunday, when those red spots were coming back, I asked ChatGPT to understand, and you can see it tried to warn me, you might have some blood issue, but I was so primed on this digestive thing, I was like, well, I've been eating and drinking like a pirate. So clearly, I'm the one that was bringing scurvy back here in 2025. I spent all afternoon eating mandarin oranges, vitamin C, and it really goes to show you that you need to have better context because ChatGPT will just tell you what you want to hear. Now, things didn't get more serious until ChatGPT was asking, what about blood work? And I remember that my doctor ran some blood results and they came back abnormal. Not only that, but since it was the weekend, the doctor hadn't seen them yet. And that's when things got even more serious. It started to ask me, well, what about these blood results? Are there any other symptoms? And I was like, yeah, my teeth do feel sensitive. Wait, you think I need to see the doctor? What are they gonna say? I have internal bleeding? But wouldn't they have called? Oh, no, they wouldn't, it's the weekend. Okay, I'm going to the ER. And it's a good thing I did, because by the time I arrived, my dangerously low platelets of 25,000 had dropped to zero. I had none left. And the doctors were so confused by this, they ran my test results three times and were so confused about how this could have happened. They kept asking me, how did you know to come in? Now, platelets are kind of a big deal. In case you didn't know, if you cut yourself, you keep bleeding. If you bleed on the inside, you might not be able to recover or even know it's possible. So this was a really serious situation for me. And I was eventually diagnosed with something called ITP, which is a rare autoimmune condition that is sometimes virally triggered. I was so lucky to have my laptop with me the entire time I was in the hospital. And like any good early stage founder, I was live blogging, using AI no code tools, and of course, using ChatGPT, which helped me through the two platelet transfusions, two IV IG immune treatments, and four steroid injections that I received. In the end, I kept the same context window and summarized everything and sent it to my family, which was honestly such a relief. I know that this was what my family also wanted because we were able to really contextualize together. Now, in the end, really, I was just so happy that AI was able to step in for me in a moment when my doctor could not. And I thought this was so important that I was writing about it live from the hospital. People told me it's tough to get attention as a female founder, but I did not know I would need to live blog my near-death experience to finally make it on the front page of Hacker News. <laughs> right above, what do people see when they're tripping? <laughs> But there's a reason I think this resonated. It's because AI gives you agency. The fact that AI can step in and moments when life moves faster than systems or when bad things happen or people are off the clock, that is not just some techno-optimist party trick. This is actually saving lives. AI was able to step in for me during one of the scariest days of my life. It did not diagnose me. 
It did not replace a doctor for me, but it gave me the questions to ask and the confidence to advocate for myself. And ultimately, my platelet showed me as a founder how to go from zero to one. Thank you.